Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael DiNicola, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down The Mandalorian, my favorite parts of season one, as well as addressing some of the rumors I've heard in season two. And of course, in the background is going to be the time lapse painting. So stick around. <laughs> So I'm going to be straight with you. This is the first time I've ever drawn the Mandalorian. I'm a Star Wars fan. I don't want to say I'm a big Star Wars fan only because I know how really devoted the fandom can be. People who know everything about the extended universe and have read all these books and I'm not that guy. So the drawing that you're seeing me working on right now, I'm trying to get everything sorted out for the thumbnails. But I wanted to do the Mandalorian. I want to do him some justice, man. That is going to involve some planning. Sometimes when I'm drawing, I plan things out when I'm being good about it. I uh, figure out the roadmap, right? Kind of draw out thumbnails, man, or a rudimentary version of what I think the piece is eventually going to look like. And when I'm not being good, what I do is I, well, I wing it. I just start doodling and then see where it takes me. But because like what I said, I wanted to do Mando some justice. I sketched four different images and then I, I figured out which one I thought would look best for the piece today. Spoiler alert, I decided to use the fourth one. Let's talk about the first season of The Mandalorian. I thought it was incredible. I was expecting nothing. Matter of fact, because of the most recent Disney movies, the Disney trilogy, which I really did not like because of, well, the writing, the completely disjointed storytelling, and so on and so forth. My expectations couldn't be any lower for The Mandalorian. Matter of fact, I had a free year of Disney Plus and that was kind of the only reason why I was able to watch it. I figured, why not? I'll give it one episode. And if that episode sucks, well, just throw it on top of the steaming pile of trash that has been the overall Disney trilogy and Star Wars films, minus Rogue One. I actually really like Rogue One. And if I'm being perfectly honest, there are bits and pieces of the Disney trilogy that I did enjoy. I'm not one of the lunatics that you see on Twitter shrieking to high heavens about the tr Disney trilogy. I'm going to tell you, the first episode of The Mandalorian, they had me. They had me at Baby Yoda, of course, because I'm a human with a beating heart. But even before then, I'm a sucker for that kind of Western sci-fi genre. You give me a character who is a loner, a rogue, an anti-hero with a blast on his side, and you set him in a place that's fucking dirty and full of scummy people, and I'm in. I'm in big time, be it this or Firefly or any of the other ones. Our first introduction to the Mandalorian is him being a complete fucking badass. We see him outnumbered, surrounded, at a bar, looking for his bounty. He then proceeds to beat the shit out of the entire bar, and then fucking cut that dude in half with the door, which gives us a sense of who he is. It shows us how tough, how determined, and what kind of bounty hunter he is. This all leads up to the next episode where we meet fucking acclaimed German director, screenwriter, and documentarian Warner Herzog, who then sends our wayward protagonist on a little uh, clandestine mission where he meets some very strange aliens and he uh, also meets a robot that he hates right off the bat and we discover how much he hates robots because I think robots killed his family. Is that what happened? Listen, I haven't I haven't watched the series since it debuted last year and I, I, I don't remember. But what I do remember is Nick Nolte playing that weird alien guy and his weird walking fish things. And of course, the introduction of Baby Yoda. What would a Mandalorian video be without the uh, without the Baby Yoda commentary, the Baby Yoda discussion? And yes, 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 I know he's not Baby Yoda, blah, 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 blah. He's the child, la, 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 la. But most importantly, in that episode, besides the weird aliens and the robot hate and the beautiful Baby Yoda, we get to see that Mando has some kind of code. He's not a bloodthirsty killing machine. He kills a robot to make sure that the robot doesn't kill that baby. And this is where we get a first taste of the Mandalorian code, which we'll kind of, we'll see more of throughout the series. 
especially when he's dealing with other Mandalorian, this is the way. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Baby Yoda and what an absolute genius idea that was on John Favreau's part. Also, did you know that he apparently knew that Baby Yoda was going to be this great reveal, surprise everyone, and he kept it secret? from everybody who wasn't working on the set, specifically from the higher ups. And the reasoning behind this is genius. Well, genius, but also not very business minded, story minded, fan minded, but not business minded. You see movies and TV shows, especially for the big Disney products, they need to send this stuff out months and months and months, if not years ahead of schedule in order to get the marketing guys on it. The guys who um, are the go between between the toy company, the toy manufacturers and Disney. So we don't know what's going to happen. Let's say Wonder Woman 1984, but toy companies do because they're making the toys and those toys need to be made and shipped and on the shelves ready for people to buy weekend of opening. John Favreau did not do this, which is enormous. He knew how much that goddamn toy was worth and how much it was going to sell, which is right up Disney's alley. Think about Disney Star Wars trilogy. Think about how much crap they try to shove down our goddamn throats as far as merchandise and Mary Sue characters. BB-8 and those fucking porgs and that other shitty little droid that looks like nothing that they try to sell to, whose name I can't remember. John Favreau sacrificed all that, all the marketing, all the money that was to be made, all of that in order to keep that a secret. So when you and I sat down and watched that episode, we were shocked. And keep in mind, this is the John Favreau who's, you know, part of Mount Rushmore when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's the guy who, when Robert Downey Jr. was still looked on in Hollywood, as some washed up former drug addled lunatic, he went to bat for him. He demanded that Robert Downey Jr. be Iron Man. And him, RDJ, and Kevin Feige, they're the entire reason why we have that whole universe on the backs of that one film, The Marvel Universe is Born. And also John Favreau gave us Elf, come on. But yeah, that explains why, why when everybody wanted to buy a Baby Yoda toy, you couldn't get them for like the next three months or more because Nobody was on it, and that is fucking awesome. So much respect to John Favreau. Also, super, super side note, apparently that puppet is worth five million dollars. Five million dollars. The reason why we know this is because one of the stormtroopers was a guest celebrity in the final episode, and he had to punch Baby Yoda. I don't know if you guys remember that scene. Apparently the first take, he really swung on it and John Favreau had to do a you know, timeout and be like, dude, don't, it, it's a $5 million puppet. Now, I'm not gonna break down the entire series episode by episode. There's just too much stuff to break down. But I'm gonna highlight a few more of my favorite uh, instances throughout the show. Or people like mother Carl Weathers or the uh, buff, this uh, lovely buff broad, uh, Gina Carano, who could beat the shit out of me with an arm tied on her back because she's a former mixed martial artist who recently got into trouble on Twitter because apparently that's what happens to everyone. Unless you're me who just doesn't tweet about anything ever. Uh, she got she got mobbed up by some by some Twitter lunatics over nonsense. Who else? Amy motherfucking Sedaris. If you don't know who she is, oh man, you're missing out, man. She was an elf, Bojack Horseman, famously in Strangers with Candy. At home with Amy Sedaris, currently airing on True TV. She's fucking hysterical. She's so good. I mean, look at this goddamn wig, dude. I have a feeling this was her idea. Just knowing how weird she is, it seems like she specifically decided to do discount Ellen Ripley. I've already talked about how awesome Nick Nolte is. I feel like I should touch on how incredible Giancarlo Esposito's character is, uh, Moff Gideon. Absolutely terrifying. That dude showed up and all goddamn hell broke loose. And it was, it just kicked things up to another level. There are so many other actors I could mention. Uh, Ming-Na Wen, you know what, showing up, and I'll be honest, I think they did her dirty. She showed up for all of like five minutes before she was murdered and then dragged off by allegedly Boba Fett. Apparently, rumor is in season two, we're gonna get Boba Fett. We're also gonna get that lady from Clone Wars, Ahsoka. God, I hope I didn't butcher that. I've never seen the Clone Wars series. Uh, comment down below if you think I should watch it, because uh, I've heard I've heard good things, I've heard mixed things. I mean, I wonder who else is going to show up. This is after Return of the Jedi and 
long before the events of The Force Awakens. So who knows who's alive and who knows who might show up? I'm actually curious to see what happens to the characters that were played by Clancy Brown, Bill Burr, and that, uh, that lady who played Tonks in Harry Potter. Also, Taika Waititi's um, droid the, that he voiced, uh, IG-11. What a, what a job, Jesus, man. Who, who would have thought you'd, you'd see a droid arc in The Mandalorian? But lo and behold, it was awesome and very sad. You know, let me talk about the art real quick. I actually, if you noticed, I redrew the body. I asked a friend, Eric Kennedy, for help, and that handsome bastard, uh, he helped me out, man. He fixed my form, and then I was off to the races. Very coincidental timing, because literally, last video I made, I touched on being able to reach out and ask for a hand from your fellow artists, if you have art friends, just for some feedback. Weirdly enough, I ended up taking my own advice this week. Uh, full disclosure, I didn't use any reference for the anatomy or the pose or the background. I completely, well, I completely won it for better or worse. I did look at photos of the Mandalorian because I've never drawn him before. I don't know what his armor looks like. And I actually opted for the armor that he gets before he gets the best car steal. And I found some photos of Baby Yoda asleep, so I used that as well. One reference that I did find specifically in regards to his costume was the helmet. I went online or somebody found for me a 3D reflective model of his helmet. And I was able to use that 3D model to render this uh, in the painting. And now I'm just doing the flat colors and I'm going to toss some gradients on that and that'll be it. Now, can't let you leave without at least talking about the rumors concerning Pedro Pascal. Now, these these might not hold up, you know, come a couple weeks from now when the show debuts. All this might be BS, but apparently he walked off the set during the filming of season two because they would not let him take his helmet off to show more of his face, which apparently is a Hollywood thing to do. A lot of these actors, they want a certain amount of their face on screen. I get it, they're Hollywood stars. You know, when you think about Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man, so many times he's walking around without the helmet or we're looking at him inside of the helmet is because he wants his face on camera. But come on, man, it's the Mandalorian, dude. You're in that position of Judge Dredd. The helmet stays on. The helmet stays on, man. All right, here's the devil's advocate position. You can make it so that he takes the helmet off in certain situations, specifically when he's alone, and really only that. The only time in the entire first season where he took it off and he was with someone, staring at someone, was with him and IG-11. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he says something like, no living being has seen me without my helmet since I was a child. And then the droid says, I am not alive, or something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing. Come on, I saw it a year ago. Yeah, cut me some slack. Hey, if you feel like cutting me some more slack, guess who's in need of a like, a share, a subscribe, perhaps a comment, or even hitting up my Patreon where I'm uploading these videos for your pleasure. You can also find me live on Twitch throughout the week. I usually stream about four days a week. You'll be able to catch these shenanigans fresh, fresh as they happen. Hey, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I'm Michael DiNicola. This has been my stream. I hope you're as excited for The Mandalorian as much as I am, and I'll see you in the next one.